Tesla uh, has a very interesting take on uh, uh, iron, for instance, here. Um, he talks about, uh, talks about it in terms of electricity. Uh, I'm a, let's see, unless we should make a radical departure in the character of the electric currents employed, iron will be indispensable. Yet the advantages it, off, it offers are only apparent. So long as we use feeble magnetic forces, it is by far superior to any other metal. But if we find ways of producing great magnetic forces, then better results will be obtainable without it. In fact, I have already produced electric transformers in which no iron is employed and which are capable of performing 10 times as much work per pound weight as those with iron. This result is attained by using electric currents at very high rate of vibration produced in novel ways instead of the ordinary currents now employed in industries. I've also succeeded in operating electric motors without iron by such rapidly uh, vibrating currents, but the results so far have been inferior. Uh, he has a whole different take on... Uh, now he's talking about replacing iron with aluminum. Yes. You see, now, you see which way he's moving towards something that's lightweight. And I have heard this before, that iron, that aluminum can be made to function as a ferromagnetic material. Aluminum. Yes. How about that? And you feel yeah. that Tesla might have been on, onto this? Yes. I think he might have developed this. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's, he disclosed that he had an, you know, a special generator that, that the his description of this generator's output was so phenomenal that it's almost incredible. Uh, but he said it was composed of aluminum, iron, and copper combined in an unusual or uh, novel way. And uh, so I, I was, I've been mystified by this for quite some time. And uh, there's one of the uh, watt hour meters. I, I, this is what you were uh, alluding to, uh, or you, you feel that Tesla was alluding to, um, this being a Tesla invention originally where he, uh, uh, basically this is a, uh, an elaboration on his unipolar uh, generator, which he was experimenting with. Uh, this might have been one of the ultimate results of it. Could you go further into it? Uh, well, I just kind of stumbled across this with, uh, at the time, back in the late 70s, I just wanted, I had an apartment in my house and I wanted to know how much electricity was being used internally in that one apartment. So I picked up a couple of antique uh, watt hour meters in Albuquerque at a, at a salvage place. But these were antiques and they were, they were, there were two 110 meters, which I've been told are very expensive now to, to get one of those kind of meters. But anyway, I got these for a couple of dollars a piece. And I hooked them up in the apartment, but there were no labels on what, were the in, what was the end wire and what was the out wire. These were so antique that they just had posts on there for, for connecting wires, and they were, there was no label. So I just kind of figured out, well, let's see, I'll run the end wires in here, and I'll have two of them to do 220 for this apartment. Well, apparently, I hooked them up backwards. And uh, what they would do is the meter would spin quite rapidly when power first started to be used in the apartment. And the more power, they began to slow down. And finally, they would get, when the power usage was higher, they would just sit and vibrate. And I called it snoring because these things made a, a vibration. The whole house would vibrate with these things. I mean, really? Wah, yeah. Wah, yeah, it'd make the whole house shake. And if the power usage went up higher, they went in reverse. And the electric bill on the whole complex dropped by about a third. So these so meters appeared to be electricity yeah, into the these, system. they appear to be generating power. And uh, so I just got to, uh, when I was at a, I was at a salvage place looking for some metals and whatever in my little inventor trip that I do. And there was an old man there and his name was Dort. And he was from Virginia and he says, my father invented, and I started talking to him about these one hour meters because we he, he was interested in this sort of stuff. And, he says, well, my father invented the original generator that's used on highly top secret Navy subs today. And Here we go uh, with it the was subs based again. on the Tesla invention, and the Nazis stole it. And now the government uses it, and it's highly classified. And I told him about these meters. He said, when that 
meter is stationary and vibrating, he said, that's the center of load. He says, aluminum is the reflector, and uh, copper is the active element, and iron is the magnetic. And, uh, and uh, he said that, that this kind of technology was in, incorporated in his father's invention, which is a Tesla oscillator. And in investigating his Tesla oscillators, he, Tesla had an oscillator in the 1890s that had a, a little piston in it that was driven by compressed air. And it only had to vibrate about a sixteenth of an inch, just hum. But the inductors, there were two inductors that were on a shaft that the piston was attached to, and these two inductors were just windings that cut the magnetic lines of force in these two big cores. And the windings were over 50 miles long in that. And uh, so that would correspond to what uh, Tesla talked about, uh, 925 mile an hour, a uh, mile uh, wavelength, which would be for the Earth about uh, 13 and a half cycles per second. And this is what they use for ELF technology. And that means that the Navy submarines are not, that the ELF waves are used not only just to transmit messages, they're also used to transmit power. So the submarines actually, uh, and this is what the Germans used in their electro U-boats. Always, always the uh, underlying theme of submarines and submarine power. Yeah, it's being like a clandestine type of uh, piece of equipment to begin with, uh, that, what better thing to power it? Tesla said one of his greatest discoveries at Colorado Springs was the discovery of te terrestrial waves that went from pole to pole. And that was one of the discoveries that he made. So basically this stealth, this ELF technology uh, would do nothing but like make this wave energy in the Earth accessible. And uh, that, that would be how they would get a 13,000 mile range out of these submarines in World War II. Well, we have up on the screen now um, uh, Tesla's unipolar... 30,000 uh, miles, take it back. 30,000 miles. 30,000. That's a lot. It sure is. Um, his version of the uh, unipolar generator, which, of course, uh, as, as you can see, is very similar to uh, the uh, watt-hour meter, uh, suspiciously similar uh, <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, and it's funny because uh, w when I heard you speaking about this uh, once before, uh, and, e and even in your book, I I'm thinking to myself, if, if this were to be true, that somehow they have, they have uh, surreptitiously been using this this equipment, then I could pick up one of these meters somewhere, and uh, and the only working components or, or the the most rel relative relevant components would be uh, the disc and the magnets, and it would all be the same, and the rest of it would just be cosmetic or possibly uh, a prop even. Well, that's that's pretty you know stretching uh, you know stretching credulity to the limit, and I just wanted to see how, how far this, this idea went. So I went to my uh, scrap yard, <laughs> my uh, local scrap yard, and was able to uh, uh, dredge one of these things up. Steve, can you get this? Um, and as you can see, it's a uh, West, uh, I believe this is Westinghouse, watt hour meter. And it has, you know, a lot of us have been looked at this from time to time in our backyard and wondered what all this this wonderful dealy bobs are <laughs> uh, up in the up in the front here that that runs all these these great little dials and things and you know it's just in, endless technology here and I'm thinking to myself well you know maybe uh, it isn't what Mr. Line is talking about because of all this this wonderful stuff here but if it's true it this this all this stuff would be ir irrelevant and I look back here and I found that there were two screws and only two screws holding this to the rest of the apparatus. And when this drops off, what do you have left here is the disc, the aluminum disc, the magnet here, and two electromagnets in the back. And Tesla and said all. it was essential the magnets were weak. The, this is a weak magnet right here, a weak permanent magnet right there. The, the reason for the weak magnet is so the magnetic field can be reversed and oscillated as it bounces off the aluminum. Right. 
So here we have a relatively modern version of this, and it's a Faraday disk or a Tesla disk, uh, more properly termed, running the whole show. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is compare this to an older meter. Well, according to their theory, they're saying that when current passes through the flux, or rather, the flux is, is, runs counter to the, to the electrical uh, flux is created by the electromagnet. The idea is that when the flux passes through the disk, it's supposed to create a th thrust on the disk and turn it a certain direction. And then the metering gadget is supposed to measure the number of times per second or minute or whatever that this thing turns and all these little gears and show you all these little digits to, to, to measure the amount of current that you're using. But the truth of the matter is, is there something here that... Uh, uh, bears looking at because uh, it's it's really a generator. Now, uh, what Originally. would what would be the purpose of them uh, uh, plugging in uh, free energy generators to each each of our houses? Uh, it could increase the amount of power that they're actually uh, being paid for. In other words, they could generate the seed power to make this thing oscillate and then you would be billed for what the meter says you used, when in fact the meter is generating a lot of the power, <laughs> along with uh, the poles and the, and, right. the, and the plates underneath all the poles. They'll have copper plates under And you them. feel that the power stations alone wouldn't, wouldn't be enough to uh, keep this moving along? Yeah, I think, well, the, the power that we get here comes from the Four Corners region. That's, you know, that's way up in the north uh, on the corner of New Mexico is where this, right. that's coming from. And it just seems to me that there's an awful lot of power to be used there, and I don't know how they're generating that much up there for, for sure. all the uses that's going on. I kind of tend to think that, uh, that some of that power is coming from earth source and also from these little generators, which are also extracting that energy from the starlight and, or photon starlight? energy. Whatever you want. It's sometimes called starlight. It's called, some people use the term zero-point energy. But that's an incorrect term. That's a relativist term. And that's the zero-point oscillations in the space-time continuum, <laughs> continuum type of stuff. Go back to know. that again. The quantum fabric, or, you know, use all these little sure. weird terms. But that's not supposed to be true according to relativist theory because you can never have one hand quantum. In other words, they use this all the time. They use this in the neutrino theory. But according to the relativist theory, you can never have a half quantum. You don't got to have a full quantum because the electron is indivisible. Oh, right, yeah. And that's not true. Um, let's compare the uh, uh, fairly modern uh, watt meter to something, uh, again, we dredged up uh, in our, our little uh, explorations. This thing is called a frequency relay. This is much older. This is uh, circa 1930s, possibly. And as you can see, uh, it has all the relevant components on it. It has the disk, the weak magnet, and the electromagnets, and, and a power resistor up here, but basically that's it. And this has an inhibitor that causes it to oscillate. So, uh, your comments? Yeah, it's, it's, it closes the switch. It shows here, it says uh, close left at 61.9 cycles. Close right, they don't even show. But you see two little contacts, one here and one there. When this disc goes here, it closes that one. When it goes here, it closes this one. So it's oscillating back and forth. And I assume that it has something to do with these coils out here. But I don't know what a frequency relay would be, except this 61.9 is almost 62 cycles per second. It, it sounds to me like it uh, if the, if the frequency isn't right, it opens or closes the switch here. But it, it also could be vibrating back and forth. Uh, it, it's got a limiter on it and a spring that makes it return to one position. Uh, but it looks like some very mysterious little gadget. Yeah, it's suspicious how... Um how similar that is to uh, a modern-day gadget without all the bells and whistles on the front 
uh, apparently they weren't uh, too interested in concealing technology as much as well according to that, that diagram that you had on there earlier where it showed the unipolar generator uh, you can see where Tesla shows in the illustration that the positive charges go one way in the magnetic field and the negative charges go around the other way uh, it uh, here okay now you can see one set of charges uh, goes this way and the other set goes back this way I can't see the markings on there but in that magnetic field because a magnetic field will will do work on moving charges and then the current is you see you have a loop here here you've got a thing on the edge to pick up current and here you got a return loop near the center now Tesla had a subdivided disk he said if you subdivided it this way you could energize the field and if you subdivided it the other way you could de-energize the field so if you had a disk with subdivisions going this way back that way this way and back the other way then when you spun this disk between these fields you would cause an alternating magnetic field if you put windings on that field you have a generator that's far uh, beyond the current that could be generated by this disk generator and this could be as big as uh, the watt meters we just uh, yeah. showed and that's you all generate, you need you get an oscillating magnetic field with windings around it and you could get a lot more energy this way. And this is, this is how most of his technology that got high output worked. But he described one generator that was special that, that we don't have anything on, the government's concealed it, that the output was phenomenal. And uh, it sounds like the watt hour meter from his description of it. Wow. From what we can get our hands on. And, um just for good measure here, we have just another photograph of, of the same thing, basically, with, with the magnets and the disc, the weak magnets in the front here, yeah. and the disc going through it, um, and this business. <laughs> That's just to, to measure the disc span. But the, the one that I hooked up backwards, the disc would rotate fastest when the current usage was lowest. And then as it, the usage went up, it began to sit stationary and uh, vibrate, and then it began to rotate the opposite direction. And, uh, so it indicated to me it's generating more power than it's, uh, than it's being used at that point when it's going backwards. When it's at stationary, the center of load is generating as much as, as you're using. 